there is a significant announcement I'd like to make. So in the four local government council areas of Wollara, Waverley, Randwick <coughs> and the City of Sydney, if you live or work in those local government areas, you need to stay at home unless absolutely necessary. The necessary reasons include Stay at home. <laughs> ah, so they've told me I can't leave my area. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to go in to my area. So I bought a torch and now we are going in. Or under, you could say. Ah! See that place right there? That is where we're gonna be going. But the thing is, there is no exit anymore because you can't get through the bars. They barred off the exit because Entry is about five kilometers from here. So the tunnel's maybe five kilometers long. I don't know specifics, but pretty far away. So you gotta crawl through a tiny little pipe and yeah, then you get into the tunnel and it's crazy, it's a fortress. It's one of the most well-known drains in Australia. See that guy there? His name's Pred. We'll come back to him later. But not many people know about it, so I'm gonna show you about it. Also, don't think I'm gonna be showing you the entrance because I don't want other people attempting this. So I'll see you tonight. We just parked up and now I better go head to the entrance. So I'm gonna be quiet and I guess I'll see you in the drain very soon. Okay, let's go. We're literally underneath a little grill. Skateboard here. Back back. Now we're gonna head through there. That's how you get in, so. So the thing about the entrance is you have to squeeze through this 30 centimeter wide pipe and then drop into a pool of ankle deep water. This is the start of the fortress, so. This is why I brought the skateboard for. It's kind of scary. So the first bit of the tunnel is pretty tight and you gotta walk for a while till it starts to open up. I've been walking for like 20 minutes. I can finally stand up now, that's amazing, but I'm gonna keep going through here. So here we've made it to one of the first checkpoints known as the mini cathedral. It goes about three stories up while its older brother down the drain is about seven stories high. Stalic tights, I think they're called. I don't want to break them off, but it's pretty cool. All behold the bowels of the earth where spirit ants are. So at this point, I thought it'd be a good idea just to leave the skateboard behind because it's kind of slowing me down because it's way too bumpy, way too wet. It just doesn't really work. Thanks for coming, skateboard, but don't really need you, so I'll leave you back there, mate. Look at that, bro. It's like some old school. Oh, shit. Cool. So no, I am not trying to summon a demon. What I am doing though, is lighting a few candles for the man who discovered the fortress back in 1992. His name was Mike Predator Carlton. So after the man passed away in 2004, the cave clan, which he helped set up, set up a memorial to pay respect inside the fortress. So, what's the cave clan you might ask? Well, I'll let someone else explain. As we sleep in the dead of night, they can a secret society that descends deep into the underworld beneath our cities. They have a great deal of expertise when it comes to mechanical things, when it comes to the internet, engineering, that sort of thing. They know how to read blueprint maps, they know how to read Sydney water maps. Don't worry, don't worry. We're going back to the fortress. I just need to give you guys some context first. The cave clan have again entered the public debate with the deaths of two people caught in a stormwater drain at Sydney's Lurline Bay over the weekend. The tragedy again raises the issue of the risks of these intrepid outings and the reasons people like the cave clan do it. So by now I think we know the place is pretty dangerous, right? Let's get straight back in there. Not many people know this, but the fortress was a spot where the cave clan used to throw these exclusive underground parties. Take a look. Enough of that, back to right now. So we finally made it to the cathedral, which is seven stories high. One slip and you're... So once you make your way all the way to the top, there's actually a little commemorative plaque for Pred. So at this point, we've been in the drain for about an hour or so, and we're still about half an hour away from the outfall. And as we start to get closer and closer to the outfall, your ears begin to ring as the waves reverberate through the guts of the fortress. Bro, my ears, can you hear that? It's waves, bro. My ears are starting to pop, bro. It's crazy. Oh, and I also found a swing. Anyway, let's get ready for it. 
So we're literally just about to arrive at the water slide, but keep in mind, if you went down the slide and hypothetically there was no rope to get back up with, unfortunately, you're stuck down there until someone finds you because that thing is so slippery. So slippery, in fact, that some people would ride down it with bodyboards. <laughs> Take a look. But it doesn't stop there, right? So it's the water that scares me the most. It can fill to the top leaving not only no room to maneuver, but no room to breathe. No way out of here at all. We made it. We did it. Okay, look, to be completely honest with you, I was not staying around any longer than I had to. As soon as I was done, I was out. Get me out of there. I ain't waiting for a wave to come knock me off my feet. No way. So, it was time to go. We headed back, said our goodbyes for one last time. Probably got seen in my GoPro just died. Yeah. I made it back to the entrance. Yeah, Meet was... computer.